Hello. In this video, I'm going to take a moment and sh teach you how I set up the the Madlib GUI um, template that you can use to kind of um, build on to do a, a Madlib, but with a GUI interface. So what we're going to end up with is this. Um, we're going to be able to put in a couple words. We're going to have a display screen here, and then we're going to have a, a run me button at the bottom that's actually going to execute the program. So I can put in like um, word one, word two, word three. I'm not actually going to try and make the story. I hit run me, and then I get my story in my window. So we're going to try something new as I do this. What I have here is two projects up and open. I'm, I'm actually going to be in the process of copying whatever's in the left side into the right side screen, but that will give you an opportunity to kind of see where I'm going as I take the code in. With that in mind, let's dive in. So when we want to use uh, a GUI interface, we're going to import what we need from Tinker, or tkinter. I never say it right. Um, and again, tkinter is um, a predefined module with a bunch of functions to make GUI design really easy. Um, and the first thing we always do with GUI design is create um, our main window. And our main window is the window that has the X and the, the maximize and minimize. And we do that by creating a name for it, which I typically call root, and then calling this um, function tk, which is a constructor, but we won't get into that right now. And then the last line you always have in these is you, you kind of initiate your main loop, and your main loop is, is what essentially causes your program to kind of fire up and sit there and wait for an event to happen. So if I come and run this now, and it's going to appear off screen, let me drag it in. There's my window as a start. So we're going to this is where we're going to end up, and that's our kind of very basic place. So the first thing we're going to add is we're going to kind of add um, the label with an entry. And in this case, I have three of them. But the idea is you can add as many as you want. So that's the first thing we're going to kind of pop in here. So let me just drag this off the window. So to do this, what we do, and then we scroll down. Um, here are the steps that we actually do this. We create a label. We create an entry box. We pack the label widget. We pack the entry widget. Um, and we're using the geometry manager called pack for this example. There's a couple geometry managers we can use, but just to get started, we're going to use this one. And pack geometry manager is a nice one, which kind of does everything for you. So it's really simple. So step one, label one equals label. And the parameters that this, this, this constructor takes um, is we're going to give it the window that we're going to put it into, and we're going to give it the text that we're going to call. So this is going to be text equals word one, um, and this is going to be a noun in my case. Let's imagine. And then I'm going to make my entry one, this entry, and all I have to give this is um, the root window that is going to be part of. So the next step is I'm going to pack these two elements. So once I've actually created these two widgets, I have to actually pack them into my window. And to pack them in our window, we simply use the the pack meth function that can be associated with the object we've created. So we can say we've created an object or a widget called a label widget, which is named L1, and it is associated with the root window. So when I go L1.pack, it knows to pack it in that window. And I go E1.pack, it knows to pack it in the window. So if I come up here and run this now, I have a little problem because it's too small. There's there's what I get. I actually ended up with with this, but it was so small I couldn't grab the, the relocate button. But that's what I end up with. If I want to reverse the order of them, I just pack them in the opposite order. So what I do now is I'm just going to take this, I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to do it three times to get my three windows. So L1, L2, E2, L2, E2, L2, E2, L2, E2, and let's change our text to word 3, and word 2. So if all's gone to plan now, we should end up with, and sure enough, we do. Um, there you go. Now, what I find annoying here is every time I create it, what's happening is it's, it's creating so small I can't grab the relocation uh, icon. Oh, there it is. So we're going to look a little later about how to change the size of this. Okay, so let's pull up again my 
what I'm kind of going for. So you see the next thing I have is this text space. So to kind of grab this, I'm going to come down here and let me scroll down. And this is a section of code right here that generates my display box. So I'm going to say display box, that's the variable I'll call it, equals text. And again, I'm going to associate it with the root. Um, and I just go display box dot pack. And what that does is it puts it into the root window for me. And if I give this a run now, all goes to plan. Sure enough, there it is. Now, compare the difference. So this is what I'm generating on the right hand side. In the left hand code, that's what I'm generating. So I don't know if you can notice this here, but you see how along the edge we have this nice little trim here that I don't have here. What we can do is when we pack, we pack this, this widget into the root, we can actually pass along some information to kind of to change the look and feel. And where we do that actually is right here. So when we pack it, there's a bunch of a uh, commands you can pass along as arguments into the pack function. And that will kind of give some give some slightly different look and feel. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pad the X 10. We're going to pad the Y10. And all it does is it just gives a nice little trim around the edge. Oh, it didn't do that for me. Ah, because I'm typing in the wrong spot. I should probably pay closer attention. <laughs> Let's do that again. Um, pad X equals 10 and pad Y equals 10. But, you know, nonetheless, it notice there was an error because you, could, you can pad your X and Y in any situation where you're packing an element into your window. And sure enough, there we get this nice little trim around the edge. And there's actually a, a, a pad of Y above. Nice little side note. Let's say you want to pad the, the different, like each side, something different. You can pass it as a parameter. So I go 10, 100. So now I'm adding a pad of 10 on one side and a pad of 100 on this side. Um, but in our case, I just want the same padding on both sides. So I'm going to leave it like that. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert some content into this. So when you insert something into the display box, um, you're going to use a built-in function called insert. And again, you have to pass it a couple things so it knows what to do with it. We're going to pass it um, first off where to put it. And the end, end is a constant which says pad it at the end of the box, whatever's in there, comma. And we're going to say um, exercise one. Mad Libs. There we go. And I'm going to put a couple backslash ends there. So this is where our escape quotes start coming in kind of handy because we can start putting in some spaces in these text boxes. And I give that a run. Now I have my Mad Libs. Now you'll notice here I can type in here, which I probably don't want in this chain because I'm using this as an output, but you could make this an input. But in this case, I only want this as an output space, so I don't want the user to be able to edit it. So what I can do is I can use another another built-in um, function called config and I'm going to pass the config variable called state and I'm going to disable it. And what that does is essentially it stops the user from being able to interact with it. What's important to note is that it also stops the code, the program, from being able to interact with it. So it's really important that you first insert and then you disable. You're actually going to have to re-enable it in order to add content to it, which we'll see how to do that shortly. So the last thing we want to add, if we look at this, is we see we have a run me button here at the bottom, which actually I want to add some padding to the bottom of that. We'll fix that in ours. We have that button. So I'm going to make a button called run me. I have a button widget. I'm going to put it in my root window. I pass text equals run me. And I have this other parameter or argument I'm going to pass, and it says command equals run. And I'm going to get an error right now. The reason why I get an error is because what this is doing is it's it's essentially telling the program that when you click this button, I want you to run the method called or the function called run. And I haven't defined that yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the very top of my program above here. And you can see I've done that in this one as well. And I'm going to define my functions. This is this is called binding a function to, to, to a widget. I can bind a function to a variety of things in a GUI program. And what binding does, it means when something happens, execute that function. So right now I'm going to say def 
run. And I have to pass this parameter star args. And what this does is it sets up my definition to take a number of parameters, meaning that if I'm acting on some individual widget, so for example, if I bind this, this function to a couple widgets, I'm going to know which widget I'm talking about. That's getting into slightly more advanced stuff than what we're really interested in right now. But um, what I would like to stress is that you need this star args right now. Okay, so right now all I'm going to do is I'm going to print, I'm going to say clicked. So if I come down um, and I run this, it should work. You think? If you caught the mistake, good on you. Um, watch what happens here. I'm going to give this a run. No button. The reason I don't have a button yet is because I haven't packed it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say run me dot pack and I'm going to pad y and I'm going to pad the y 10 on both sides. So if I run this now I get a little bit of a feel. Now what you have to watch here is that notice see how I've padded 10 on the y on run me it means I have 10 above the run me button and 10 below the run me button but the space between the text and the run me is larger. That's because I've added padding to both the text as well as the buttons. So the space here is actually 20. So this is a perfect opportunity to use the 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 point pass it as two separate values. So 0 comma 10, which I believe this should be the pad at the top or the northern pad and that should be the, the southern pad as we can think about it. Sure enough, the button looks a little nicer there. And let's check if it works. And you can see all I've done right now is just display click in my console. So this seems to be working. All right, let's put some logic in. So I'm going to come up here so you can see the code that I've already done. So the first step you want to do is access the element in the entry widget and store it in a temporary variable. I'm going to do that for every one. So I'm going to say e1 val equals e1.get. So essentially this is invoking a function on the entry e1 and that gets the content and stores it e2 val equals e2.get, e3 val equals e3.get. Um, so now I have that the information that I can kind of do whatever I want with them. I want to stress the point here is that when we pull this information from these entry widgets, they're coming in as strings. So if you're trying to do a math program where you can enter some mathematics and you try and pull a number, you're not going to be able to do any math to that until you actually convert the type. Oh, and look at that, I made a little mistake here. <laughs> I caught the mistake because up here, there's E3. But I didn't rename these, so this should be L2E2, L3E3, L3E3. Perfect. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to construct your string your story and store it in the variable string. So now this is a really important point. You can try and place the content directly in, but you're far better off to, to construct your string first in a variable and then do the string all at once. There's lots of reasons for this that I'm not going to dive into. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some variable called story, and the story is going to have a bunch of x's, and then I'm going to say e1 val, oh, it should be a plus e1 val, bunch of x's plus e2 val something and then uh, e3 val okay and then now that I've constructed this story I'm just going to insert the string into my into my display box so again I use that same thing display box dot insert and I'm going to insert to the end of the display box comma and now I'm going to insert story. And in theory, this should work. So I give it a run, word one, word two, oops, pardon me, word two, word three, and I hit run me, and nothing happens. The reason why nothing has happened is because, remember I talked about this whole config, and currently that window is, that widget is disabled. I can't add anything to it. So, after I insert something, I, I want to disable it. But before I insert something, I need to uh, I need to set it up so I can. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the state to normal. And by setting it to normal, I can now actually add some content. So let's see, word one, word two. I always do that. Word three, and I give this a go, and there's my story. Now, a little annoying piece here is notice it keeps adding the story in the end. Maybe I want to kind of run a different story each time. So one way you could do this is you could do this now. You could say story equals story plus. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a couple backslash ends, escape codes. So by adding those escape codes now, word one, let's see if I get this time. Word two, yeah, yeah. Word three, and I run this. Now each time I get my story on a different line. And I haven't cared about formatting or anything here. You would want to be sure to put a space inside of here so it looks proper. And I'm going to take this last opportunity to just kind of stress how useful string construction is. If you're using the print command, um, when you use the print command with Python 3, uh, you actually pass variables using a comma. So if I want to put a comma, in there, put a comma, um, and it tries to help you by adding spaces. So if you're having a problem with spacing in the print command, you can do a string construction first, which allows you to have total control of the spacing, and then pass it on. And this is the end result. So I hope this video helped. Um, please, comments are always welcome. Um, tell me what you want. Tell me what I can do to make this a little easier for you to get as much as you can out of this experience. Have a wonderful day.